Hey everybody, it is Telly Telicious here and this is season 11 of RuPaul's Drag Race. Oh my goodness, so I'm so excited. I can't believe it is officially finally here already. This was the night, this was the celebration. This was the party of season 11 coming through. And oh my goodness, like it is almost day tonight, the perception I had between the Meet the Queens videos and the season one episode here. So let me just get into it. So firstly, um, let me just say that Plastique Tierra, like I had her like second to last in my little Meet the Queens like top 15 video. But she, like seriously, once I saw her out of drag for the first time and she was just like this cute little South Korean boy, like the type you went to like high school with or something, you know, hang out with when you're like the nerdy kid, transformed into Plastique Tierra, like this beautiful beauty model. It's like, okay, I could see myself hanging out with and having a great time chilling with this person where before when I just saw Plastique, I'm like, oh, who is this Barbie doll? I didn't know all about that. But when I saw the whole picture and got the whole image put together, I'm like, okay, you know what? I can see this. I think she gonna be good. And um, who else did I have some misconceptions about? Um, maybe a little bit of Brooklyn Heights, but oh my goodness. Well, we'll get into that later. But like, at first I thought she was just like the Canadian detox. You know, I didn't think she was gonna bring anything else to the table. Out of drag, she looks like Lance Bass. And you know, then in drag, she looks like the fiercest detox in season five, you know. And you know, she was looking really nice. And who else was really looking nice again was Miss Vanjie, you know, who finally came back from season 10. We've been waiting all these months. Some other people that I'm really excited for, specifically people who like, retweeted me on Twitter and stuff, you know, is Miss Raja D. O'Hara, who, you know, I don't think she got a big role in this first episode, but she did retweet me back about, you know, my little idea that her Raja and Aja need to have a Raja, Raja and Aja show. So you know what? I don't care what anybody has to say. I hope she wins. Then it got into the episode and right away it went right back into the old format of the photo shoot, which I was like, what? They're bringing the photo shoot back? And I was super excited about that because I always love when they do a good photo shoot at the beginning. And this time, the set they had for the photo shoot was like the set they would have had for like the whole episode, like a couple seasons ago. So it was really impressive to see how improved this show has become just within like the years of it being on TV. Oh, and so then on this photo shoot, with every single queen that walked on the set, they had a different queen come back from the past to do the photo shoot with them. And you know, they tried to have, you know, the queens kind of like direct, so you're gonna do this, you're gonna do this. And that came to like the only real drama from this scene of the show was with my Minneapolis hometown hero, Mercedes Iman Diamond, where they kind of played her out to being like, oh, she doesn't know what she wants uh, her drag race queen to do. She doesn't know what she wants the photo shoot to look like. And it's just kind of like, oh, really? Like, I mean, I kind of thought like, I mean, did all these other queens like really direct them or I don't know. But so anyways, I was kind of sad that the moment they gave my poor Mercedes Iman Diamond Minneapolis hometown hero queen was this moment of her in the photo shoot not knowing what to do and I'm like oh sad face oh my god and so then hold on a second okay so then there's the whole situation with silky nutmeg ganache or whatever her name is so you guys know how I kind of felt before about how I had heard she had said some negative things about Say Kevi from Camp Wanakiki, the YouTube drag camp competition. You guys can check it out now. But like I was really upset when I heard that some of the things she said was a little transphobic and so then I was a little upset about it. And then she comes to the set and she has this huge personality and you know before the episode airs I was watching that um, intro where they all walk in and she of course had the biggest personality and it's like well, maybe I kind of have to like her. Oh my goodness. But then the episode aired and it played and like the whole episode was about, I want to spin up. I want to be a star. I need to stand out. And then everybody else was like, I mean, there was even this candid moment between some queens where they're like, well, she's standing out. Well, this is TV. Well, good for her. But it was kind of like everybody was already like, ah. 
and oh my goodness, then Miley Cyrus was in the room and she was in the picture, and then there was this crazy silky bitch and like, you know, she was acting crazy and all that stuff, and then Miley's like, yeah, you cool, yeah, stay away, stay away, security. Oh my goodness, like she was probably the worst fan to meet a celebrity since that night that I met Manila Luzon at the night. Um, but so then their challenge was to create an outfit inspired by the dragses of previous queens that was on the show. And so like some of, let's see, there's so many outfits that went on the runway and I just saw it and I'm not gonna remember all these looks, but what I will remember is that Brooklyn Heights got detox, which she looks like detox. And then she came out looking like detox and it was good. And so it actually the outfit that she came up with looks like a good combination of what she would do and what detox would do. So maybe that was actually the most successful combination. But at the same time, like I said in the Meet the Queens video, I see her as like the Canadian detox. So I wanna see a little more differentiation between her and detox. Some other queens that stood out for me for the runway looks was Miss Vanjie, who anything she did other than the Barbie doll circle dress was gonna be 100% better than what she did in the previous season. And she killed it, she looked great, she looked like she was ready. She didn't even act like she was like at the beginning of the competition. She acted like she was on episode two, like, like, or maybe episode three, like, so episode one was her failing the competition, episode two was her life since Drag Race, and episode three was her coming back to prove that, you know what, I'm here to kill this, I'm not gonna go home again, I shouldn't have gone home the first time, and y'all already saw that. They put Soju in the bottom, and granted, um, if Soju had seen Drag Race before, she should have known that the only other time an Empire Waste appeared on the show was when somebody went home, which was Miss Fame back in season seven for her ugliest dress ever. And then Soju came out, and it was probably even worse than the ugliest dress ever, but I still love Soju, and I was telling them, oh no, I can't believe that she came out looking like this. It's like, no, don't do this, don't do this. I was really hoping Soju was gonna be like the top four. I thought she was gonna be a star. I guess I can understand that Soju, she uh, was cast because of her YouTube fame, and unfortunately, like, it almost, to me, it kind of felt like they were trying to put her in her place, and I didn't like that either, actually. I, oh my god, I just really wanted Soju to kill the competition, and I wanted her to go all the way, but you never know, there might be all-stars, and I mean, they could bring her back for all-stars. She's a huge, I mean, she's made a big deal for herself before the show. She could make an even bigger deal of herself now, so I feel that she has a chance, just like Jasmine Masters for being the social media queen of season four, Soju could come back to represent that for all I was really excited for because Soju, I was super excited about that she has her YouTube show and I was super excited to see her on the show and also Hannah Montrees. Now I don't know her personally but I do know her mama, Miss Coco Montrees, but that opens up a whole nother can of words where she's saying, well I'm already being critiqued in comparison to Coco so it's a big pressure on me. And unlike Plastique Tierra, like Coco Montrees looks dead set just like Coco. Like, and so it's just kind of like she really is continuing Coco's legacy as Diana Montrees or Kalinga or whatever still we call her in the outside. Um, did anything else exciting, whimsical, and crazy happen in this episode? I, let me just think. Okay, so Miley was there. Uh, Silky was crazy, so she went home. Kahana saved herself by doing that flip. This was a really good first episode, and I like when I saw them all doing the walk-ins, and I just got more and more comfortable where with this season was gonna go, and it's like, okay, I think I talked about this episode enough. I don't know what else I can say. I tried to keep it positive because the drag race community has a toxic fan base that I'm trying to battle against. So hopefully I did a good job at staying mainly positive. Hopefully I didn't talk too negatively about these queens because if I ever go to DragCon, I don't want them to think, oh, well, there's Tedley. He was talking shit about me 